This video is sponsored by ClipDraw, a software that we use to edit our videos. If you're interested in using this software too, please see the description below for affiliate links. The upgrade to Pavard France has been crying for, or the anti Churam, or style and no substance. Just how good is Jewel Kunde? Kunde is an excellent one on one ball winner. As we can tell from the stats, he tends to not go to ground. He prefers to intercept. He's a bit like an NBA basketball player who looks to steal the ball rather than the rugby equivalent who goes in for a thunderous challenge. And this can have advantages and disadvantages. The plus is that he's quite nimble, he stays on his feet, and that allows him to take on players like Vinicius. We've seen players like uh, Rudiger do that with Salah. What he lacks compared to a Rudiger, in my opinion, is that presence. So when he does go in to intercept the ball, sometimes he's not winning it in a dominant fashion, which can ricochet back to the opposition and lead to chances. Kunde's reading of the game is, is pretty solid. He's someone who understands the distance between himself and the attacker. He knows he's got the recovery pace to make up for any errors in positional play, but he doesn't want to rely upon that. He adapts his movements. He's looking over his shoulder to see which movement the attacker's making, and he adapts his movement. He's got the hip movement really well. It's not easy to defend against a Vinicius, but Kunde's very agile. He can stay on his feet, and that allied to his reading of the game makes him a very difficult player to outsmart. Again, we see the situation here. He follows his man across. He's very good at covering his fellow centre back, so he can come across and even come into the left sided channel and still be comfortable. So Simon, Marcelino, can you know him a Rather like his ball winning, Kunde's lack of presence in the air prevents him from being a beast. He's got a good leap, and I wouldn't classify him as a liability, but if he was to play in a back four in England, I'd say he needs to be stronger in the air than he is. He's got a good leap. But has he got that dominance, that physical dominance of a Kunate? If he was to defend in a side like Man City, Liverpool, where any mistake can be fatal in a title race, he's someone who I could definitely see certain centre forwards getting the better of in the air. In a back three, his heading's more than passable. Statistically, looks stronger than a Rudiger. But we do have to put it into context. He plays in a league which is slightly less challenging from an aerial perspective. Now, in possession, his numbers aren't as good as a Rudiger, but still, you know, he's got almost 91% success rate. Um, he's getting on the ball a lot. He's someone who likes to take on that first pass from the goalkeeper, doesn't panic. He's happy to sort of bring it back onto his left foot, switch the direction of play. So clearly someone who possession teams will want in their team. Someone who, as he gets older and older, more mature, he's going to get even more influential in possession. If you looked at his recent games for France in the Nations League, he played like he was under no pressure. Kunde's numbers in terms of creativity are par for the course in this respect, but it's an area which I expect to improve, especially if he becomes a wide centre-back in a back three for an elite outfit. He's got good IQ in the final third, he's got good crossing ability. I can imagine him making underlapping runs of high quality or even overlap. Runs. I guess the major weakness he has is that his through balls in between the opposition centre back and full back, he either under hits them or he over hits them. His weight of pass needs to become better, in my opinion. Statistically, Kunde looks like a solid long passer. He's someone who has a high accuracy rate. But if you look at it from the eye test perspective, he's someone who, when he's hitting these more simpler passes, switching the direction of play to his opposite centre back in that 3-4-3 free, free in possession or to the person who's occupying the opposite flank he's generally quite good quite accurate um, when he's got more sort of complicated long passes to play as we see in the footage coming up he struggles he kind of hits and hopes especially when it's down the line type of situation and it's much more intricate in terms of the weight of the pass needs to be better he tends to over hit his passes or misdirect them Kunde. Calm from Jules Kunde. Wonderful. In terms of his dribbling, there's no doubt. Kunde is one of the most exciting centre backs in world football. And there's a reason why he's trusted at times as a right back for France, because his agile is incredibly comfortable with the ball. He's got a bag of tricks, press resistance, you know, he's got that in spades. 
He's someone who can even drive into opposition territory, um, not just sort of bring it out from under pressure in his own third. He can drive forward with that ball, progress the game, as we see here. So he's a big threat with that ball. And that's why these teams want him, because in the modern game, press resistance is so important. For such an attacking centre-back, it begs the question as to why Kunde's goal threat numbers are quite average. They're not superior to the, you know, more stance to thrill. Tactically, severe lineup in a 4-3-3 formation, which becomes a 3-4-3 in possession. Their CDM drops back to form that back three, and that's why Kunde has been able to develop that reputation as a wide centre-back, despite playing what on paper is described as a back four. He's been heavily linked to Chelsea, where one would imagine that he's going to be used as a right centre-back, and he would bring the following attributes to the role. Press resistance, someone who would pick up that pass from the goalkeeper if Thiago Silva passes that ball out. You know, you'd expect Kunde to be the first one to give him an option than that right side or straight from the goalkeeper. You'd expect him to cover for Rhys James. So Rhys James expect him to be even more aggressive going forwards if he knows he's got someone like Kunde behind him. In fact, he could even overlap James and allow James to sort of come inside into the midfield more. A bit like how we've seen Trent Alexander-Arnold become more and more of an inside playmaker. And from a defensive perspective, he provides great cover for someone like Thiago Silva if they're done for pace. He's very good at screening his centre-back partners. He can come over to the other side of the pitch if he needs to. So he's got good reading of the game in that sense. At Barcelona, it's less clear what his role would be. One can imagine Xavi perhaps using him instead of Ronald Arojo and going with that back three once they're in possession. And Kunde would play a very important role in bringing that ball out from the defensive third. But I wouldn't see him as a right back, for example, in a back four where I've seen Orojo being used. I think that would be a waste of Kunde's ability. So in conclusion, I think Kunde is an upgrade to someone like Pavard for France. I think he can potentially develop into a world-class side centre-back in a back three. He's a very niche tactical player who happens to be versatile in the sense that he can provide cover for other positions but I wouldn't say he can become world class in other positions. He's someone who is unique in that he's very good going forwards but he's also a solid one-on-one -on -one defender with decent intelligence. I think his biggest issue is his physical presence and I'm not sure how much he can change that and do anything about that. Someone like Lillian Turam was half the player technically but just through his sheer presence and his mentality, he was able to become a goal. Kunde, for me, lacks that presence. And that's why I see him as someone who could potentially be a world-class player if he's put in the right setup. I think he's a very system-based player. If you want to get the best out of him, I can't see him becoming world-class if he was to play in a back four and to be one of the centre-backs in that duo. But in a back three, there's no reason why he can't become one of the best. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you guys again next time. Bye.